एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल आई एम रीति एंड आई एम बैक विद अनदर लेक्चर इन द डी बी एम एस सीरीज इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी लर्न अबाउट सीरियलाइजिबिलिटी एंड टाइप्स ऑफ सीरियलाइजिबिलिटी इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वी वुड भी लर्निंग अबाउट कॉन्फ्लिक्स सीरियलाइजिबिलिटी सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर डू लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग लेट्स जस्ट री रिवाइज सम ओल्डर कॉन्सेप्ट सो वॉट वॉज सीरियलाइजिबिलिटी सीरियलाइजिबिलिटी इज अ प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ अ शेड्यूल वेयर द आउटकम इज इक्वेलेंट टू सम सीरियल एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन सो वाई डू वी नीड सीरियलाइजिबिलिटी सो इन कॉन्कर in schedule there was a non serial execution of transaction because of which there was some consistency issues which were coming into our database so to encounter this consistency issue we had serializability as well as some concurrency control mechanism now as part of serializability we make sure that if there is a schedule which has concurrent execution so you can say interleaved execution we'll try to have a serial execution of that particular schedule so that we can use the concurrent schedule and can also in counter the consistency issues now what is conflict serializability a schedule is said to be conflict serializable when one of its conflict equivalent is serializable so basically if a schedule can be transformed into a serial schedule by swapping non conflicting operations then the schedule is conflict serializable so when do we say a schedule is conflict serializable so ideally there are two methods which we can use first is what we can do is we can swap the non conflicting operations that is the adjacent operations and we can find a conflict equivalent schedule now for this conflict equivalent schedule if there are no conflicting operations present after swapping all the non conflicting operations we can say it is conflict serializable second is using the precedence or you can say the conflict graph so in the conflict graph we see that if the conflict graph has any cycle or not if it has cycle we can say it is not conflict serializable if it doesn't have cycle we can say it is conflict serializable so let's learn about first the conflict equivalent and then we will go to the precedence graph so conflict equivalent if a schedule s1 is formed after swapping adjacent non conflicting operations or pair in a given schedule s then s1 and s are conflict equivalent so if there are two schedule s and s1 and s1 is formed after swapping the non conflicting operation of s then we can say that these particular schedules are conflict serializable now what are the conflict and non conflict pairs so conflict pair are read write write read right right when performed on the same data item what are non conflict pair so they are read read when performed on the same data item read read when performed on the different data item right right when performed on the different data item so let's see so why these are non conflict pair consider if i am reading a data item a and then as part of another transaction i am reading the data item b so there is no conflict right because we are only reading the value we are not reading any modified value or we are not updating any value we are only reading the value so it will not cause any consistency issue because of which it is called as non conflicting coming to here so we are again reading the same data item but again it won't cause any conflict or consistency issue coming to here so we are writing a data item a and we are writing a data item b so we are writing into different data items as part of transaction t1 and t2 so these are also non conflicting because if i am writing to data item a and again i am reading to that particular data item only this could be conflicting but these are not conflicting now coming to this one where in transaction t1 we are reading the data and in transaction t2 we are writing the data but the data items are different here we are reading from a and here we are writing in b so again if the data item are different there is no no conflict if the data item is same if only there is a write operation involved there would be a conflict else there would be no conflict now coming to the conflict pair we are reading a data item a and then we are writing some value to that particular data item a so there is a read write conflict again we are writing to data item a and then we are reading it consider after some time this particular transaction fails so we are reading some invalid data because if it fails it will abort and roll back and it will come back to its original value but here we have read the updated value so it will have a invalid value that is why it is a conflict pair now coming to write write where we are writing on the data item again we are writing on the data item as part of transaction t2 so these all pairs are the conflict pairs where we are performing any write operation in any of the transaction on the same data item these are the non conflict pair because if we are performing these operation there is no inconsistency issue which is encountered in our database so how to achieve a conflict equivalent schedule so when a schedule can be transformed into a serial schedule by swapping adjacent non 
on conflicting operations. Conflict arises when two transactions assess the same data item and at least one of them is a right operation. So whenever one of them is a right operation and if there is any operation which is getting performed on the same data, right operation, read operation, then we can say that there is a conflict which is arising. Now why we are only swapping the non-conflict pairs and not the conflict ones? So if we swap the conflict pairs, the order of execution, if it was read of A, write of A, the result of values may change as first we were reading A and then writing or modifying A. But now it will be writing into A and then reading the modified value. So consider this was before uh, changing the conflicting operation and this is after changing the conflicting operation. So it would be T1 of WA and T2 of RA. So here if the value of A was 10, it reads the value of A, so it would be 10. It tried the value of A, that would be considered A plus 10, so it is 20. Now here, it is writing the value of A. So A would be A plus 10, so that is 20. And now it is reading the value of A, that is 20. So if you see that here the value of A while reading was 10, but here the value of A while reading is 20. So if we switch the conflicting pairs, there could be a chances of data inconsistency because the result which we were getting earlier and the result which we are getting after is different. So uh, the modified value result might change if we change the order of execution. So let's solve a question where we have to find the conflict equivalent for a given schedule S1. So this is the schedule. What we have to do is we have to find the non-conflicting pairs and we have to swap it. Then we have to see that again if there are any non-conflicting pairs and then again we have to swap it until the time we don't get any non-conflicting pairs. So let's see. So here the read is happening on X. Here the write is happening on X and read is happening on X. So there is the same data item. So there is a write read conflict coming to here. So there is a read in X and there is a read in Y. So these is non-conflicting operation. So we will just mark it like this that these both are non-conflicting operation coming to here. So there is read in Y and then there is a write in Y coming to here. There is a write in Y and then there is a read in Y. So there is a read write conflict. So first is find the adjacent non-conflicting pairs and do a swap. So we have found the adjacent non-conflicting pairs, so we have to swap them. So Rx will come here and Ry will come here. So after the swapping, we have got Rx, Wx, Ry, then Rx has come here, then Wy and Ry. Now again, we need to see that if there are any non-conflicting pairs, so this is Rx, then there is Wx, then there is Ry, and then there is Rx. So this is again a non-conflicting pair. Now coming Rx, Wy, so this is also a non-conflicting pair and coming here, so there is Ry. So for this pair we have already swapped but here we haven't swapped, so we have to swap Rx here and Wy here. Since we are reading the X and we are writing on Y, so the data item are different, that is why it is a non-conflicting operation. So after swapping this, the schedule we get is Rx, Wx, Ry and uh, this is being swapped to here and this is being swapped to here so it will be wy then here it will be rx and ry now let's see the schedule again so it's rx wx ry wy rx ry so here you can see that write is happening on the y data item and read is happening on the x data item. So there are no more conflicts which is left in this particular schedule. But what if there is a schedule and I found the view equivalent of that particular schedule but there are still some conflicting pairs which is present in that schedule. So that particular schedule can't be a conflict equivalent schedule for a given schedule S1. And we can also say that it's not conflict serializable. Now this particular method we don't use very often because if the schedule is very large then there would be a lot of complexities. That is why we use the precedence graph method or the conflict graph method. Now how to check whether a schedule is conflict serializable or not. So conflict occurs when two operations from different transactions assess the same data item and at least one of them is a right operation. So we use the conflict graph and precedence graph here. So conflict graph or a precedence graph is a directed graph which is used to determine the conflict serializability. The nodes represent the transaction, the edges represent the conflicts between the transaction. So we will be drawing a conflict graph where the nodes will be representing the transaction, there will be a directed graph and the edges would be representing the conflicts between those transactions. So let's see how we can draw the conflict graph. So conflict graph has node edges and cycle. Now node each transaction in the schedule is represented as node in graph. So if there are two transactions T1 and T2, we represent T1 and T2 as the node in the graph. Now coming to edges, an edge from transaction Tx to Ty denoted Tx 
TY is added if an operation of TX conflicts with any operation of TY. So if in TX or you can say T1, if there is any operation, consider read of A, which conflicts with some operation which is present in T2, then we represent the edges or we can say we represent the conflicts. So TX operation precedes TY operation in the schedule. So TX operation will always precede the TY operation in the schedule. Now coming to the cycle detection. So schedule is conflict serializable if and only if the conflict graph is acyclic. That is there is no cycle in the graph. If there are no cycles in the graph, it means that the schedule can be serialized without violating the order of conflicting operations. So if there are no cycles in the graph, we can say that that particular schedule is conflict serializable. That means that that particular schedule is serializable. But if there is any cycle, we have to go to the view serializability, which is another type of serializability. So let's see that how using the conflict graph or precedence graph, we can tell that if a particular schedule is conflict serializable or not. So check if the given schedule is conflict serializable or not. So there are three transactions, T1, T2 and T3. And there are some operations which is getting performed on data item A as well as data item B. So there are two data items and there are three transactions. So let's see. So the step one is we have to find the conflicts in the schedule. How we can find find the conflict is first if we are seeing for any transaction t1 we have to look in t2 and t3 for any conflicts if we are checking in t2 we have to look for t1 and t3 for any conflicts and if we are looking for t3 we have to check for t2 and t1 now what are the conflicts so there could be a read write conflict performed on the same data item there could be a write write conflict performed on the same data item there could be a write read conflict performed on the same data item so if we are checking for any write operation in a given transaction we have to check for write as well as read and if we are checking for any read operation we have to only check for write operation so let's see so the first operation is read of a so we have to check that if in t2 or t3 there is any write of a so let's see in t3 there is so there will be a read write conflict where there would be a conflict between t1 and t3 on a now coming to the next operation that is read on a so let's see if there is any write of a yeah it is present in t1 so there will be a read write conflict of t2 t1 on a and let's see in t3 yes there is present so there will be a read write conflict on t2 and t3 on a now let's come to this data item that is write of a so let's see is there any read of a as well as write of a so is there any read of a present no is there any write of a present yes it's present so we can say that there will be a uh, ww conflict between t1 and t3 we are not checking for the older operations because then we have already discarded or we have already find out the conflicts so we are only looking for the operation for which we haven't found out any conflicts so there will be a write write conflict which would be present between t1 and t3 on data item a now coming to this one write of a is there any read of a or write of a present no, it's not present. Now coming here, right of B, is there any read of B or right of B present? Yes, it's present. So it would be T2 to T3, right read conflict on B. Now coming here, read of B, there won't be any conflicts. So these are all the conflicts which we have found out in the schedule. Now the step two is we have to find the nodes. So the nodes are all the transaction T1, T2 and T3. So we have found out the nodes. Step three is we have to find the edges and the conflicts. So conflicts we have already figured out. Now we have to find the edges. So there is a read write conflict which is happening on T1 and t3 on the data item a so on t1 we are performing a read of a and on t3 we are performing a write of a so here the value of a is getting updated but there is a read which is getting performed before even updating the value so there will be an edge from t1 to t3 because t1 reads a before t3 writes a now there would be an edge from t2 to t3 because of read write conflict there will be an edge from t1 to t3 because of write write conflict t2 to t3 because of read write conflict and t2 to t1 because of read write conflict so here you can see that some of the edges are getting repeated t2 t3 t2 t3 so we don't need to write for the repeated edges so we can just discard one and we can only use one of the edge and here also there is t1 t3 which is getting repeated twice so we can only use one edge because we have already identified that there is a conflict so there will be only three edges t1 to t3 t2 to t3 and t2 to t1 so now we have to draw the graph so first we'll draw all the nodes so that is t1 t2 and t3 now we have to form the edges so there is an edge from t2 to t1 so this is the edge there is an edge from t1 to t3 so this is the edge and there is an edge from t2 to t3 this is the edge so these are all the edges but can you see that if there is any cycle formed or not so there is no cycle formed 
So since the graph has no cycles, we can say that this particular graph is conflict serializable. So in this step five, we say the same. If the graph has cycle, it is not conflict serializable or serializable. If not, let's find the serial execution of transaction. So since it has no cycle, it is conflict serializable means it is serializable. So if a graph is serializable or if we can say a schedule is serializable, then we can find the serial execution that how the serial execution will happen or which particular transaction will start first and followed by others. So let's see. So let's find the serial execution of transaction. So we have to find the possible combination first. So there are three transaction. I told that the number of possible schedule when there are three transaction is three factorial or whenever there is n transaction that is n factorial. So three factorial is three into two that is six. So these are all the possible combination where first T1 comes and then T2, T3, then T2 comes, then T1, T3, then T3 comes, then T2, T1. So these are all the possible six combination. So what we have to do is we have drawn the graph. Now we have to find the in degree of the graph. So what is the in degree? In degree is the number of edges that is directed to that particular node. So we have to see that this is the node and how many edges are directed to this particular node. So if we see here the in degree for T3 is 2. The in degree there is no direction so there is 0 and the in degree for t1 is 1 because there is one directed edge here there is two directed edge and here there is no directed edge so we have found out for t1 it's 1 for t2 it's 0 and for t3 it's 2 so once we find the in degree we have to find that particular node where the in degree is 0 so that would be the first one in the serial execution so in t2 the in degree is 0 that is the less conflicts are there in t2 so we would be having t2 as the first in the serial execution now we will remove t2 from this particular graph now here it is t1 and t3 so now the in degree for t3 is 1 and for t1 it's 0 so now it will be followed by t1 and then it will be followed by t3 so this is how we find the serial execution of a conflict serializable graph so what we have to do is first we have to draw the conflict graph then in the conflict graph we have to check if there is a cycle or not if there is a cycle we can say that that is not conflict serializable and if there are no cycles we have to find the in degree for all the nodes which are present in the graph once we find the in degree we have to check that which particular node is having zero as the in degree so that would be the first one in the serial execution then we have to discard that particular node from the graph and then again we have to check the in degree of all the other transaction and we have to follow the serial execution in that manner so the one possible equivalent serial schedule is t2 followed by t1 followed by t3 so all the executions would be happening first for t2 then t1 and then t3 so let's see if it is helping us to make a serial schedule without any conflicts so there is t1 t2 and t3 so first t2 operations would be executed so that is read of a write of b so it would be read of A, write of B, then coming to T1. So it would be read of A, write of A, and then coming to T3. So that would be write of A and read of B. So here we can see the adjacent conflicts which were present earlier are now gone. So this is a conflict equivalent of this particular schedule which is present here. So this was all about conflict serializability in this particular video. I hope you like this video. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're someone who is new to my channel, can go ahead and watch out the tech content first. And if you find it useful, can go ahead and subscribe. Also, if you have not followed me on my social media handles, you can go ahead and follow. The links are in the description. Till then, take care, keep learning, keep growing, keep smiling. Bye all.